welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of several Tudor history books. Now today I'm taking you back to the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, the very last of the Tudor monarchs. But on this day in Tudor history, the 3rd of May 1568, courtier, member of parliament and privy councillor, Sir Edward Rogers died. Rogers had had a long and successful royal career, serving three of the Tudor monarchs. I mean, that's pretty good surviving doing that. So let me give an overview of his life and his career. Sir Edward Rogers was a Somerset man, being the eldest son of George Rogers of Langport in Somerset and his wife Elizabeth. He was born in around 1498. He fled into exile in France in 1526 after committing some kind of offence. We don't know what, but he was pardoned, fortunately, in 1527. And whatever this offence was, it didn't stop him going on to serve King Henry VIII, so it couldn't have been that bad. In Henry VIII's reign, he served as an esquire of the body, sewer of the privy chamber and carver. And in 1544, he accompanied the king to France on the French campaign and was captain of 200 footmen at Boulogne. Rogers reaped the rewards of his loyal service when he was granted a monastery and a priory following the dissolution of the monasteries. And he was also granted a manor after the fall of the Marquis of Exeter. In 1540, Rogers was recorded as quarrelling with Thomas Seymour, who was, of course, the brother of the late Queen Jane Seymour. Now, this was obviously a big quarrel, a serious quarrel, as they were both bound in £1,000 to keep the peace. Then, in 1543, he was in trouble once more, this time for breaking the Lent fast by eating meat. In 1547, during the celebrations for King Edward VI's coronation, Rogers was knighted. And in 1549, following the fall of Edward Seymour, who was uh, Edward VI's Lord Protector, he was one of those chosen to attend the young king as a principal gentleman of his privy chamber. He may not have been trusted, though, entirely by the new leader of the government, John Dudley, because in January 1550, his privy chamber position was taken off him and he was put under house arrest. Luckily for him, this house arrest was just temporary and he was back in favour later that year. He must have proved his loyalty. He received a pension and was granted one of the former Lord Protector's manors. One person falls, another benefits. In 1553, when Edward VI was dying, Rogers was one of those who signed the king's device for the succession. And in that device, of course, Edward VI named Lady Jane Grey as his heir. And when Mary I came to the throne, Rogers was vocal in his opposition to her plans to restore England to the authority of Rome and to restore Catholicism throughout the country. He ended up being imprisoned in the Tower of London in February 1554 after being implicated in Wyatt's rebellion. But unlike Wyatt, who of course went to the scaffold, Rogers was released in January 1555 after paying a recognizance of £1,000. So you sort of paid your way out of prison, really. A royal pardon was granted in July 1555. And it's not known where he actually went after that, uh, whether he went into exile abroad for a time, which would have been a sensible move, seeing as uh, he, he was opposed to uh, Mary I's plans, her religious plans. But he was back in England in 1558 and he was ready to serve the Protestant Queen Elizabeth I, Mary I's half-sister. He was appointed Vice Chamberlain, Captain of the Guard and Privy Councillor in 1558 and then Controller of the Household in 1559. 
His biographer, Michael Graves, notes um, that he was active and energetic uh, in his service to the Queen, but that he began missing Privy Council meetings from 1567. So he'd been active until that point, and that suggests that he may have started suffering with ill health at that point. And he died on this day in 1568. He was laid to rest in St John the Evangelist's Chapel in Westminster Abbey. Just some other facts now about Rogers. He also served as Justice of the Peace for Dorset in Henry VIII's reign and for Somerset in the reigns of Henry VIII, Edward VI and Elizabeth I. He was also a Member of Parliament in the reigns of Edward VI, Mary I and Elizabeth I. And there's not many courtiers that could say that they'd served all of those monarchs and kept their heads. In the 1520s, um, Rogers married Mary Lyle, who was daughter and co-heiress of Sir John Lyle of the Isle of Wight, and they had a son, George, and three daughters. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 3rd of May 1580, poet, farmer, and agricultural writer Thomas Tusser died. In last year's video, I shared his verses for the month of May, which are wonderful. So please do watch that video. I'll give you a link in the description to enjoy those verses. I think we all need to enjoy something nice at the moment, don't we? And on the 3rd of May, 1536, something not so nice now because we're going to the fall of Anne Boleyn. Following the arrest of Queen Anne Boleyn and prominent courtiers of Henry VIII's uh, court, a shocked Archbishop of Canterbury wrote to King Henry VIII. And you can find out what he said and what was going on in a video that I did for the 3rd of May, 1536. And I'll give you a link to that as well. You can subscribe to this channel by clicking that button there. You can give me a like and leave a comment. And you can also hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live. Thank you for joining me. Bye bye.